Chapter 1 Living in Misery Candy and POV I gasped and sat straight up in shock as a bucket of ice water was dumped on me, waking me up and soaking the thin blanket I was covered up with. I heard several people laughing and then I heard my sister's voice saying, Get up, wench. Breakfast won't make itself. I finally managed to focus enough to see my fraternal twin sister, Katya, and her boyfriend Cody standing over me, while Cody's best friend David was standing just behind them. All three were laughing at me, and an empty bucket hung from Cody's hand. I wanted to glare at them and inform them they could make it themselves, but I knew better. Talking back to them only served to bring about another beating. I'm coming, I told them, careful to avert my eyes. You have fifteen minutes, wench, Katya snarled. If I'm not eating in fifteen minutes, well, you know what happens. With that, the three of them left the room. I shuddered. The last time a meal was late, the beating I'd gotten from various pack members had left me unable to walk for a week. Let me introduce myself here. My name is Candy Ann Amberson. My twin sister Katya and I are the daughters of the Gamma of the Howling Wolf Pack. But if you were to ask our parents, Gamma Richard and his mate Kelly, they would tell you they only have one daughter, their precious Katya. I don't know why they resent me, why they're ashamed of me. I've given up trying to figure it out. I'm 17 years old. I'll be 18 in three days. That's when I'll finally get to meet my wolf and shift for the first time. You see, we're werewolves. You've probably been told we don't exist, but we do. Most humans have no idea we live and work among them every day. We live in packs scattered across the world. I live in Little River Falls, Wyoming, on a mountain called Grand Teton. Our pack is pretty large, we have around 1,000 members. We're not the largest pack in the United States though. That honor goes to the Whispering Pines Pack in Pikes Peak, Colorado. I'm basically the pack slave. I had to beg to be allowed to go to school. I'm a senior at the pack's high school. Howling Wolf High. I know, very original, right? But besides going to school, I have to cook breakfast and dinner for the pack every day throughout the week, and on the weekends I'm responsible for all three meals. I also have to clean the pack house from top to bottom, and keep up with laundry for everyone living in the pack house. That's about 50 werewolves. I usually only manage to get about three to four hours of sleep a night. Luckily wolves don't need as much sleep as humans. My bedroom, if you want to call it that, is a converted walk-in linen closet. There's barely enough room for my small, twin-size cot that I sleep on. I have one pillow, which I had to beg for, and a thin blanket to cover up with. I went to the bathroom across the hall, grabbing dry clothes from my small stack of clean clothes on the way. I have exactly five outfits, and two sets of pajamas. Most of my clothes have holes in them, which I've carefully patched myself using the sewing skills I taught myself by watching videos online. Two of my outfits were for when I was cooking and cleaning, and the other three were dedicated to school. I quickly did my business, then changed into the dry clothes after quickly drying myself off with a used bath towel someone had hung over the shower curtain rod. I shoved my long, straight as a pin blonde hair into a high ponytail, then brushed my teeth. I glanced in the mirror as I brushed. I didn't think I was ugly, but I was definitely no beauty queen. I noted that my green eyes looked dull and lifeless, but I suppose that was to be expected, given the living heel my life was. I was too thin, but since I wasn't allowed to eat much if any of the food that I cooked, I couldn't help that. I quickly ran up the stairs to the kitchen. The rest of my so-called family lived on the third floor of the pack house, along with the Beta's family. The Alpha and his family lived on the fifth floor. But me. My family forced me to live in the basement. I just tell myself that it might be cold, dark, and damp down there, but at least I have the entire basement to myself, with the exception of a few mice. The basement was underground, with no windows, so no one else wanted to live down there. 
I don't want to either but I have no choice. The first and second floors of the pack house were for any pack members that wished to live there, which mostly consisted of the young, unmated members. The fourth floor was for the offices of the Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and their mates. There was also a big conference room up there for when officials from other packs came for a meeting. Also on the first floor was the kitchen, dining room, and the common living area. In the living area there were three couches, a few chairs, several chairs, a big 50-inch flat screen TV on one wall, and a pool table. There was also a separate, slightly smaller TV that was just for gaming. We had a PS5, an Xbox Series X, and a Nintendo Switch. I only knew about those because I had to keep them clean. I wasn't actually allowed to play them. I quickly began pulling out eggs, bacon, and pancake batter. In just a few minutes, I had several stacks of pancakes ready, a couple big bowls of scrambled eggs, a couple plates piled high with bacon, and was brewing my second pot of coffee. I even managed to hide in a corner and shove a piece of bacon in my mouth. I immediately followed it up with a breath mid so hopefully no one would notice the smell of bacon on my breath, eating without permission would result in ten lashes of a belt across my bare back. I had learned that the hard way a couple of times. And I had always been curious about if coffee tasted as good as it smelled, but I wasn't allowed to actually drink it. I was only allowed water. I carried the plates out to the dining room and began setting them out on the two long tables that were pushed together to form a buffet of sorts. After I'd done that, I took one of the pots of coffee and walked around the dining room, filling coffee cups for anyone who wanted it. I was careful to turn my head away from everyone, not wanting them to smell the bacon on my breath. Even though I'd taken the breath mint, werewolves have a very strong sense of smell. I was pouring Katya's coffee when she suddenly grabbed my shirt and yanked me down to her, putting her face in mine. The sudden movement caused the coffee to slosh out of the pot, landing on her arm. Ouch, she screamed. You burned me. No, I, I started to protest, but she cut me off. Don't try to deny it, she shrieked. Everyone in this room saw you do it. Several wolves surrounding her murmured and nodded their heads in agreement. She smirked at me. Also, is that bacon I smell on your breath? Dad. Dad, or Gamma Richard, as he makes me call him, walked over to us. What's the problem, sweetie, he asked her. The little thief is at it again, she told him. She's been stealing bacon. I can smell it. Gamma Richard glared at me. Is that true, Wench? If you haven't noticed, Wench appears to be their go-to nickname for me. No, I lied. Lies, he roared, backhanding me across the face. Everyone in the dining room stared, but no one dared to intervene. Most of them probably thought I deserved it. And most of the ones that thought I deserved it had slapped me around a few times themselves. I shrunk back from him in fear. I was only 5 feet 8 inches and 110 pounds soaking wet. He was 6 feet 3 inches and 240 pounds. Not to mention that he was muscular and I was stick thin. Please, I whimpered, don't hurt me. I haven't eaten in three days. I, I was starving. Please, you deserve to starve after what you did, he screamed at me. You broke the rules so you don't eat. By broke the rules, he meant I had been three minutes late serving dinner a few nights ago. Dinner was to be served at 6.30 on the dot. I had cut my finger chopping vegetables and had to quickly bandage it up to keep from bleeding into the food. In hindsight, I should have just bled all over everything and let them eat their bloody food on time. I thought bitterly. Please, I whispered. I won't do it again. To the basement with you, he roared. I bowed my head and started to walk towards the stairs, knowing that he was right behind me and already unbuckling his belt. My heart was pounding in my ears. Wait. I turned to see Alpha Kyle Jacobs, Cody's father approaching us. Gamma, I know this is not my business, but she turns 18 in three days, correct? 
Yes, Alpha, my father replied. Perhaps she should be allowed at least a few meals between now and then, so she will have the energy to shift. Child-sized meals at least, Alpha Kyle said calmly. After all, if she dies, we would have a body to deal with plus we'd have to find someone else to cook and clean. Gamma Richard considered for a minute, then nodded. I suppose you're right, Alpha. He turned to me and grabbed my chin, forcing me to face him. You got lucky this time, you little thief. But mark my words, if you do something like this again, it'll be twenty lashes and a whole week with no food, you hear me? I nodded. I don't hear an answer, he roared. Why yes, Gamma, I stammered. Now, what do you say to the Alpha, he demanded. T thank you, Alpha, I stammered. Alpha Kyle nodded at me and walked away. Gamma Richard glowered at me. I knew that was because he felt like I'd gotten him in trouble with the Alpha. Now, since the Alpha has suggested it, go fix a child-sized serving of eggs and pancakes and eat it. No bacon, since you already stole a piece. I nodded quickly. Yes, Gamma. I hurried away before he could say anything else. I placed half a scoop of eggs and a single pancake on a plate and took it to the kitchen to eat it. After breakfast, I had just enough time to clean up and then I had to hurry to school. I used to walk to school, but a few weeks ago I saw a bicycle placed on the side of the road for the garbage truck to pick it up. It had flat tires and one handle on the handlebars was missing. But I aired and patched the tires up and wrapped duct tape around where the handle went and it was ready to ride. The light pink paint was chipping off and it had a couple small rust spots, but overall it was in decent shape. It sure did make the trip to school and back faster. I threw my backpack on my back and ran back down to my room where I had my bicycle squeezed in beside my bed. I quickly but quietly rolled it up the stairs and out the front door, making sure it didn't leave tire tracks or dirt behind. Once I was out of the parking area, I pulled my helmet and knee pads out of my backpack and made sure the chain and lock were there. I'd had to carefully save up the change I scrounged up out of the couches and the washer and dryer in order to buy them. The helmet was light pink, and the knee pads were white. I was about halfway to school when Katya flew by me in the little black sports car our parents had bought her for her, technically our, 17th birthday. They never even bothered to acknowledge that it was my birthday, too. Katya tooted the horn and waved with her middle finger in the air as she drove by. I simply ignored her and didn't bother to react. I arrived at school just three minutes before the bell rang. I hurriedly grabbed the chain and lock and locked my bike to the bike stand at the edge of the parking lot. When I turned to hurry into the school, I groaned when I saw Cody and several of his goons standing near the entrance. I walked with my head down towards the doors. Hopefully they would just let me pass without messing with me. Well, what have we here, boys? Cody drawled. Damn it. Why couldn't they leave me alone? I tried to keep walking by them, keeping my head down to avoid eye contact, but Ethan Lovelace, the pack's future Gamma, since my parents didn't have any sons and Katya didn't want the position, stepped out and blocked my way. The Gamma position, by the way, had never been offered to me and I wouldn't have accepted it if it was. Please let me by, I whispered quietly. I knew that they would still hear me due to werewolf hearing. They all guffawed. Please let me by, Ethan mocked me in a high-pitched, nasally tone. Then, in his normal voice, he added, But why, baby? Don't you want to hang out with us? He attempted to run his hand down my back, stroking my ponytail, but I shoved his hand aside. Ooh, Ethan, did she just hit you? Cody hooted. You gonna let her get away with that? You know, I don't think I am, Ethan answered. With that, he shoved my hand away and grabbed my ponytail this time, yanking my head back. I felt tears of pain spring to my eyes as he pulled my ponytail as hard as he could. I'm surprised he didn't rip it out. Listen here, fatty, he growled. You hit me again, 
you'll be swallowing your teeth, understand. I just stared at him. I hate them, I thought. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. He pulled my head back a little farther. Did you hear me, fatty, he roared. Yes. I managed to say. Yes, what? Yes, I understand. I whimpered. He let me go and slapped the back of my head, shoving it forward so fast it's a wonder I didn't get whiplash. Good. I'm glad we had this talk. Cody and the other goons all snickered as they walked past, and Cody shoved my head down too. I just stood there for a minute, trying to pull myself together. I had made myself a promise years ago that they would never see me cry again. And so far I'd kept that promise. One more month, I told myself, just one more month. Just one more month and I can blow this town. I was turning 18 in three days, and would meet my wolf and shift for the first time. Then, as soon as I graduated, I would be just fine to survive on my own. I couldn't wait. Chapter 2 Causing Her Misery Cody's POV Do it. Katya egged me on, opening the wench's bedroom door for me. I smirked as I snuck into her room. You shouldn't be such a jerk to her, my wolf, Jared grumbled. I rolled my eyes inwardly. Lighten up. Lighten up, he snorted. You want to torture an innocent she-wolf, and I'm the one in the wrong. It's not torture, I argued. We're just having a little fun. Not torture, he scoffed. Look at it from her point of view. She would have told us if it was torture. I insisted. This time, he was the one rolling his eyes. Keep telling yourself that. Idiot. What are you waiting for? Katya whispered. Do it. I'm hungry. Sorry, my wolf wanted to offer his opinion, I whispered back. She rolled her eyes. He's such a stick in the mud sometimes, she whispered. I just know my wolf will be way cooler. Jared snarled. She only wishes her wolf could be half as cool as me. Jared disagrees, I told her, still whispering. She rolled her eyes again. Whatever. Just wake the wench up. With that, I crept over to the cot where Candy Ann was sleeping and threw the bucket of ice water on her. She sat straight up, gasping and sputtering. Get up, wench. Breakfast won't make itself. Katya shouted at her. Candy Ann looked around wildly, trying to focus in the darkness. Finally, her eyes landed on us, and my best friend, the future beta, David Richards, who was standing behind us. All three of us were laughing at her. She averted her eyes and mumbled, I'm coming. You have fifteen minutes, wench, Katya snarled. If I'm not eating in fifteen minutes, well, you know what happens. With that, we turned and walked out of the room. I walked with Katya and David down to the dining room to wait for breakfast. So, are we going to the dance this weekend? Katya asked me. I shrugged. Dances really weren't my thing, but I didn't have anything better to do. I guess. But I thought you said you were going shopping for your birthday outfit that day. She laughed. Of course I am. Daddy insisted I get something new for my party, and I'm sure he'll let me get something for the dance too. Why don't you just wear the same dress to both? I suggested. It's not like you can't wash it in between. She looked horrified, and I could see David behind her rolling his eyes. He thought she was way too superficial, and honestly he was right. I didn't really care about that though, she had a rocking body and that's all I really cared about. She was about 5 feet 10 inches, 125 pounds. She has a body like an athlete, and her short black curly hair and blue eyes are perfectly complemented by the tan she keeps year-round, as the result of twice weekly trips to the tanning bed. I can't wear the same outfit to them both, she gasped. What would people think? They'd think daddy didn't love me enough to buy me enough clothes. I laughed. 
Everybody in this pack knows how much he spoils you, sweetheart. She smirked. Well, and why wouldn't he? I mean, I am their only daughter. Well, technically she wasn't, but she didn't like to be reminded that Candy Ann was her fraternal twin sister. I never quite understood why her family completely disowned Candy Ann, but I honestly didn't care enough to try to find out. Finally, the wench started setting out breakfast food. Good thing, because I was absolutely starved. I had just finished filling my plate and was walking back towards the table when I heard some commotion. To the basement with you. I heard Gamma Richard roar. I walked over to where Katya was standing, looking smug. What's going on? I asked. Little thief stole a piece of bacon, then burned me with coffee, she said, fuming. I saw Candy Ann bow her head and start to walk towards the stairs. Gamma Richard was right behind her and already unbuckling his belt. Wait. I turned to see my dad, Alpha Kyle approaching them. Gamma, I know this is not my business, but she turns 18 in three days, correct? Yes, Alpha, Gamma Richard replied. I was positive if it wasn't also Katya's birthday, he would have forgotten. Perhaps she should be allowed at least a few meals between now and then, so she will have the energy to shift. Child-sized meals at least, Dad said calmly. After all, if she dies, we would have a body to deal with plus we'd have to find someone else to cook and clean. Most people wouldn't realize it, but I knew that calm manner hid Dad's true feelings on the subject. The way the Gamma and his family treated Candy and disgusted him, but he felt that it was not his place to say anything to them. Gamma Richard considered for a minute, then nodded. I suppose you're right, Alpha. He turned to Candy Ann and grabbed her chin turning her to face him. You got lucky this time, you little thief. But mark my words, if you do something like this again, it'll be twenty lashes and a whole week with no food, you hear me? She nodded. I don't hear an answer, he roared. Yes, Gamma, she stammered. Now, what do you say to the Alpha, he demanded. Thank you, Alpha, she stammered. Dad nodded at her and walked away. I turned to Katya. Are you all right? Where did she burn you? She held her right arm up and pointed to the non-existent burn on her forearm. Right here, she said with a pout. Kiss it for me, baby. She held her arm up to my face and I obligingly kissed it. She smiled at me. Thank you, baby. You're so sweet to me. Behind her back, I saw David dramatically while hugging himself and making kissy faces. I ignored him and sat down across from Katya to eat my food. David sat to my left. It wasn't news to me that David found Katya annoying, I'd known that since we were pups. Just as I'd known she found him boring. They only put up with each other because of me and I knew it. Ethan, another member of our little group and the PAX Future Gamma came sauntering over to the table carrying his plate of food, piled high with eggs, bacon, and pancakes. Since Gamma Richard and his mate didn't have sons and Katya wasn't interested in the position, that meant that I as the future Alpha had the right and responsibility of choosing the next Gamma. I chose Ethan because he was such a great fighter and seemed to be a born leader. He had turned 18 a month ago, two days after I did. He was a known womanizer and some of the pack leaders questioned my choice because of that. But I figured he'd settle down once he found his mate. He sat down beside Katya and across from David with a grin. His blue eyes were dancing with amusement, and his short, spiky blonde hair was styled perfectly, as usual. So how did y'all like the entertainment this morning? He asked with a chuckle. We all laughed. Wench had it coming, Katya said smugly. Dad told her she wasn't allowed to eat anything but she did anyway. And she freaking burned me. Clumsy idiot. So, Katya, Ethan started, is it cool if I bring a date to your birthday party? Depends, she replied. Who is the date? He shrugged. Probably Jessica. Or maybe Jana. Or maybe both, 
he added with laugh. She rolled her eyes, but said, yeah, I reckon they're both okay. Both definitely not as pretty as me. Ethan snorted. Whatever you say, he teased. Jessica and Jana were a set of identical twins in our senior class. They hadn't found their mate either and they were both known as the pack shits. I personally wouldn't touch either of them with a ten-foot pole, but to each his own. I finished my food and stood up, leaving my dirty dishes on the table. Come on, y'all, we're going to be late for school, I said. The others followed suit. We walked together to the parking area, elbowing each other and cracking jokes the whole way. We stopped at Katya's black 2020 Mazda MX-5 Miata. Her parents had given it to her for her 17th birthday. Some days she rode with me in my blue 2020 Chevy Silverado, but today she was going to have her hair done after school and I had to meet with my dad and some other alphas about rogue attacks that had been plaguing some of the local packs lately. She turned and wrapped her arms around my neck, and I wrapped mine around her waist. See you at school, baby, she said with a smile. I pecked her lips. Yep, see you there, I replied, giving her but a final pat before releasing her. I turned to walk to my truck. We weren't one of those mushy, gotta say I love you before you leave type couples. I was 18, but she wasn't yet. Katya was sure she was my mate, but I wasn't so sure. I refused to tell a she-wolf I loved her until I was sure she was my mate. I climbed up into my truck and cranked it up. I turned the music up a little, classic country from the 70s and 80s, my guilty pleasure, and was putting on my seatbelt when I saw Candy Ann come out of Pack House, pushing a beat-up old bicycle. I idly wondered where she'd gotten it, but didn't really care. When I got to the school, I saw that Katya's car was already parked in the space next to mine and shook my head. She had always had a lead foot. I ambled into the school. We had about another twenty minutes before the bell rang. I spotted Katya but she was chatting with a couple of other girls. I patted her but on the way by. She turned and smiled at me, but kept talking to her friends. David and Ethan walked in a couple minutes later. David had a blue 1969 Camaro that he kept in mint condition, but he was having some work done on it that day, oil change, new tires, tune-up, etc., so he rode in with Ethan in his silver 2020 Dodge Ram. The three of us, along with a couple other guys, decided to wait outside for the bell to ring. We weren't really supposed to hang out outside the school. But this high school was comprised solely of werewolves from our pack, including all the teachers and staff. I was the future alpha of the pack, therefore they really couldn't stop me. David and Ethan were the future beta and gamma, so they really couldn't say anything to them either. And since the others were with us, they all fell into that category too. Ethan suddenly looked up and said, Look, it's the pack house wench. Let's mess with her. I looked up to see her walking across the parking lot, head down and not looking at anyone. Well, 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 what have we here, boys? I drawled. Ethan stepped out and blocked her way. Please let me by, she whispered quietly. We all laughed. Please let me by, Ethan mocked me in a high-pitched, nasally tone. Then, in his normal voice, he added, but why, baby? Don't you want to hang out with us? He attempted to run his hand down her back, stroking her ponytail, but she shoved his hand aside. Ooh, Ethan, did she just hit you? I laughed. You gonna let her get away with that? You know, I don't think I am, Ethan answered. With that, he shoved her hand away and grabbed her ponytail this time, yanking her head back. I saw tears of pain in her eyes as he pulled her ponytail as hard as he could. I'm surprised he didn't rip it out. The tears caused me to feel a little guilty, but I refused to let that show. Listen here, fatty, Ethan growled. You hit me again, you'll be swallowing your teeth, understand? She glared at him with hatred in her eyes. He pulled her head back a little farther. Did you hear me, fatty, he roared. 
Yes, she managed to say. Yes, what? Yes, I understand, she whimpered. He let her go and slapped the back of her head, shoving it forward so fast it's a wonder she didn't get whiplash. Good. I'm glad we had this talk. The other guys and I all snickered as we walked past, and I shoved her head down again. We laughed as we walked into the building. Idiot, Jared growled. You have no idea what you're doing. Oh yeah. I replied, rolling my eyes. And what's that? You'll find out, he said, and retreated to the back of my mind, still seething. I shrugged him off. Whatever. He didn't like a lot of things that I did. But he was still stuck with me. He'd be fine once we found our mate. Chapter 3 Meeting My Wolf Candy and POV Saturday and Sunday were actually not so bad days for me. Yeah, there were a few of the usual snide comments from various pack members. Hey fatty. Think you could stop being so lazy and actually do something. Because I took five minutes to use the bathroom. Or, hey Candyland, where's your date for the dance? Oh, that's right, no wolf would be caught dead with your ugly self. But honestly, I was so used to those comments that I barely even noticed them anymore. Sunday night was the night of Katya's birthday party, even though her, technically our, birthday wasn't until Monday. That was because she would most likely shift for the first time a few minutes after midnight, and everybody wanted to be there to see what her wolf looked like. Normally I would be made to set up, cook, serve, and clean for events like that. But this time I was only being made to set up. That was because my parents knew that I would most likely shift for the first time at midnight too. Heaven forbid I take any of the spotlight off of their precious Katya. So they had hired a catering service. I did all the setup by myself, and then five people came in to cook, serve, and clean up. Five people to do the job that I normally do by myself. I couldn't help but to roll my eyes at that. After getting everything set up, I decided to go back to my room in the basement, with the small child size to go container of food that I had been allowed. It was only a hot dog, a few chips, and two chocolate chip cookies, but it sure beat nothing. I glanced at the clock on the wall as I went by. 7 p.m. The party started at 7.30, and a couple of guests had already arrived. I was hurrying down the hallway to the kitchen, where the stairs to the basement were. I was keeping my head down as usual to keep from making eye contact with anyone. I was almost to the end of the hall when a foot appeared out of nowhere and tripped me. I fell forward, just managing to keep my food from spilling everywhere. I looked up to see Cody standing in the bathroom doorway, smirking at me. Gee, it must be horrible to be so clumsy, just randomly falling on your face, he said with fake sympathy. Here, why don't I help you up, he added, holding out his hand. I eyed him suspiciously from my position in the floor. I started to reach up, then thought better of it and quickly rolled over and scooted back from him, not taking my eyes off of his face. I was looking for any sign that he was about to kick me. He looked down at me and studied my face. You're really scared of me, aren't you? He said, seeming surprised. I eyed him suspiciously. Was that some sort of trick question? Finally I cautiously nodded my head slowly. Yes, I whispered. But why? We've never seriously hurt you, he replied, seeming confused. I wanted to laugh in his face. Did he call being left unable to walk for a week not seriously hurting me? Surely a future Alpha wasn't oblivious enough to think his precious pack members wouldn't do something like that. Because they totally would. Every last one of them with the exception of Eric Kasanovich and his sister Lily. They were a couple of my friends from school, and were the only two that were ever nice to me. Well, and Eric's mate Natalia. But she wasn't at first because she was jealous over my and Eric's friendship. Once we were able to get it through her head that that's all we were, she was fine. Anyway, back to the situation at hand. I simply stared at him like I couldn't believe he was so oblivious, then I stood up, 
picked up my food container, and walked away. I sat on my cot and ate my food, then decided to go to the library on the second floor to read. It was the one room in the pack house I was allowed to hang out. I guess they figured if I was reading or cleaning, I wasn't bothering them. I got so engrossed in a book that I didn't notice a few hours had passed until I looked up and realized it was 11.30 p.m. I would probably shift in about 30 minutes, so I needed to get to the forest. Gamma Richard had ordered that I go to the forest on the south side of the pack house, which was a good 20-minute walk, instead of the north side, where the forest is literally right outside the door. I already had all my things in a backpack beside me, so I walked out and started toward the forest. I could have ridden my bike, but it didn't have a headlight and I didn't want to risk running over something and flattening the tires. I wasn't really rushing, but I still arrived in the forest with about five minutes to spare. After undressing and stuffing my clothes into it, I laid my backpack inside of a hollowed-out tree that I had found and selected a few days ago. I shifted from one foot to another as I waited, not really sure what I was supposed to do. After a couple of minutes, I heard a voice in my head. Hello, Candy Ann, she said. I am Ash Anda, your wolf. I got excited. Hello, Ash Anda, I replied. It's nice to finally meet you. It's nice to finally meet you too, she replied. I can already tell we're going to have a beautiful friendship. You're more than a friend to me, Ashanda, I told her. We're family. That we are, my girl, she replied. That we are. Now, are you ready for our first shift? I am, but I don't know what to do, I answered. She sighed. Of course you don't, because none of these morons around here have told you what to expect, she said, annoyed. They don't deserve us, and they'll soon realize it. What do you mean? I asked her. You'll see, she told me. Now, just relax and get on your hands and knees. You won't always have to do that, but for the first time, it'll keep you from falling. I'll do the rest. I obediently dropped onto my hands and knees. Within a few seconds, I felt intense pain as my bones started to break and rearrange themselves. I wanted to scream, but the pain took my breath away and I couldn't. It won't always be this painful, I promise, Ashanda reassured me. I felt fur start sprouting all over my body, and soon the pain stopped. I was shaky, but I was standing on my own four paws. I dashed over to the nearby pond to check my reflection. When I saw my reflection, I gasped. Not necessarily because of my size although I was massive for a she-wolf. But there was something even more shocking. I was a white wolf. Cody POV. The party had been going pretty decent. I was a little buzzed after a couple bottles of whiskey, but not nearly as much as a human would have been. Alcohol doesn't affect us like it does humans. When it got close to midnight, Katya's parents had her come up to the makeshift stage at the edge of the forest. She had changed from her pink evening gown into a white t-shirt and jogging pants that it wouldn't matter when they were shredded during her shift. Most werewolves just stripped down naked to shift, but Katya didn't want to be nude in front of everyone. At exactly midnight, I saw her eyes glaze over and she started smiling. Everyone there knew what that meant, her wolf was introducing herself to Katya. After a couple minutes, her eyes refocused and she addressed the crowd. Her name is Julianne, she announced. We're going to begin the shift now. Her dad stood behind her, his hands held out to catch her when she lost her balance. Keeping yourself from face planting is a skill you learn after your first few shifts. Soon, as expected, her face contorted in pain and we all heard her bones breaking and rearranging themselves. Then cinnamon brown fur started spreading all over her body. Soon there was a wolf standing on the stage looking at us. She was average size, and although some wolves have different eye color than their humans, Julianne had the same blue eyes as Katya. Hello everyone, she said through the mind link we shared as a pack. 
You see, werewolves can communicate telepathically but only once they've gone through their first shift, and only with wolves in their own pack. We can do this whether we're in wolf or human form. Hello, we all greeted her. She shook her head. Wow. That'll take some getting used to, she said. We all laughed and then started undressing in order to shift into our own wolves. Before I started my shift, I approached the stage. I wanted to test something. I had already started to suspect this, but soon Jared confirmed my suspicions. Not our mate, he growled. Katya slash Julianne met my eyes, and I could see that she knew it as well. I don't care if you're not my mate, I'll reject my mate to stay with you, Katya said. We'll discuss this later, I told her, not wanting to ruin her birthday party by telling her that I had no plans to reject my mate unless she was someone completely unworthy to be Luna. I shifted into Jared to go for a run with the pack, as was tradition when someone shifted for the first time. Soon jet black fur sprouted all over me and I was standing on my four paws. While my own human eyes were hazel, Jared's were a piercing blue. He pranced for a minute, glad to finally get to stretch his legs. Then I joined Gamma Richard, his mate and Katya's mother Kelly, and Kelly in front of the stage. Welcome to Howling Wolf Pack, Julianne, and welcome to adulthood, Katya, I said in mind link where everyone could hear. Thank you, Alpha Cody, she replied, wagging her tail in excitement. Now let's run. In one motion, we all bounded into the trees, running and yipping. I heard chatter and laughter through the mind link. I loved my pack. As we ran, I saw a movement way off to the side in the distance, towards the southern side of the pack house. But wait. That couldn't be. I would have sworn I saw a white wolf. But that was impossible. White wolves were only born once every thousand years or so. I blinked, and it was gone. I decided I had probably imagined it and brushed it off. What an imagination, I thought to myself with a laugh. Imagine thinking there was a white wolf in our pack. As if that would ever happen. Chapter 4 Mate Candy and POV I saw the others run by as they went on the traditional pack run after Katya's shift. I saw a cinnamon brown wolf running at the front of the pack with our parents and Cody. I assumed that that was Katya's wolf. Brown wolves are a dime a dozen, Ashanda snorted. Wait until they find out what we are. Not yet, I told her. I don't trust any of them not to hurt us, except for Eric, Lily, and maybe Natalia. I stepped back into the shadows where the others couldn't see me. Hurt us, she laughed. My girl, you don't know it yet, but we're stronger than any of them. Your human body may be weak because of malnourishment, but mine is not. We are directly descended from Selene, the moon goddess. We are anything but weak. I'm so glad to have you now, Ashanda, I told her. Eric and Lily are at least nice to me, but even they don't know everything about me. I'm so glad I finally have someone I can talk to. I feel the same, my dear girl, she told me. Thanks to fate and the moon goddess, we are each other's built-in best friends. I mean, I live in your head, she added with a laugh. I giggled at that. She was right. She would be with me wherever I went. I walked back to where my backpack was hidden in the hollow tree. How do I shift back? I asked her. Simple, she said. Just picture your human self, and you'll shift back. I focused on my human self and soon I was back in my human form. I pulled out the bar of soap I had placed in my backpack and walked over to the pond to bathe. I was forbidden to shower or bathe in the pack house more than once a week so I had to bathe in the pond. I dried off with the thin towel I had brought with me. I redressed and walked back into the pack house. The catering company had already cleaned everything up. So I went down into my basement room and laid down on my cot, covering myself up with my thin blanket. Good night, Ashanda, I said, so happy to finally have my wolf and constant companion. Good night, Candy Ann, she replied. 
Rest well. Tomorrow, we find our mate. I laughed. Yeah, like any guy in this pack would have us. She was offended by that. If they reject us, that'll definitely be their loss. This pack doesn't know what they've been missing. As usual, I woke up bright and early the next morning to fix breakfast. I cooked the usual eggs, bacon, sausage, and pancakes, and made Princess Katya the ham and cheese omelet she demanded for her birthday breakfast. I couldn't help feeling bitter. It was my birthday too, and I'd be lucky if I even got to eat, let alone pick a certain item for breakfast. I was starting to set everything out on the buffet when the intoxicating smell of orange and vanilla hit my nose. Mate. Ashanda starting chanting. Mate. I spun around to see where the smell was coming from. To my horror, I saw Cody very intensely staring right back at me. He hesitated a few seconds, then started to get up. I quickly set down the two plates of eggs I was carrying and ran back into the kitchen. No, I thought to myself, not him. Please, not him. White moon goddess. Why? I pressed myself against the wall by the door. I knew he would be coming in there after me, and he did. The door slammed open, making me jump even though I was expecting it. He immediately spotted me and slammed his hand beside my head on the wall. I flinched, assuming the next blow would be aimed at my head. You, he growled. Of all the she-wolves in the world, I got stuck with a weakling like you for a mate, he spat. You'll never be strong enough or smart enough to be the Luna of this pack. The moon goddess made a mistake, pairing you to me. I fought back tears at his words. Ashanda whimpered, hearing her mate saying such things. But then the more he talked, the more I felt her getting angry. She wasn't the only one that was angry. I'd done nothing but bust my butt for this pack since I was five years old. Yes, at five years old I was already cooking and cleaning and doing whatever other crap jobs no one else wanted to do. I paired my anger with hers and glared up at him. Do you think I'm happy about this? I snapped. You and your cronies have never done anything but treat me like Clip and suddenly I find out I'm supposed to be stuck with you for life. Well, then, let's get this over with. I, Cody Jacobs, future alpha of the Howling Wolf Pack, Ray, he started to say, but he was cut off by the door slamming open again. I looked over to see Alpha Kyle standing beside us, glaring at Cody with his arms crossed over his chest. The two of them looked so much alike, it was like looking at a glimpse of the future and seeing exactly what Cody would look like. What in the moon goddess's name is going on in here, he roared. Apparently the moon goddess gave me this, he jerked his head toward me, as a mate. She's weak and useless, and she'll never be able to be Luna. I'm rejecting her. Are you crazy? Alpha Kyle roared. I trembled in fear, even though his roar wasn't aimed at me. A pack is always strongest with its true Luna, and it appears that she is ours. But Dad, she's just a useless weakling, Cody argued. The moon goddess does not make mistakes, son, Alpha Kyle told him. I don't usually do this, but for the good of the pack, I have to. You are ordered not to reject her. You will accept her. Do you understand? He used his alpha tone, meaning that Cody could not defy his order. Cody was seething. I could almost see the steam come out of his ears. Fine, he snarled. But don't expect me to like it. With that he turned and stomped out of the kitchen. Alpha Kyle turned to me with an apologetic look. I'm sorry, Candy Ann, he apologized. You didn't deserve that. I know it's a lot to ask, but please, give him a chance. He'll come around. The mate bond will make sure of that. I nodded slowly. Honestly, I'm not sure if I even want him as a mate. But I won't reject him right now. He nodded in return. Thank you, Candy Ann. That's all I can ask. With that, he turned and walked back into the dining room. 
I was left by myself wondering what just happened. Cody Jacobs as a mate was the last thing I expected. Cody POV. This is the same event but from Cody's POV. I got up the morning after the party, still mulling over last night's events in my mind. I had thought that Katya could possibly be my mate, but I have to admit that part of me was glad she wasn't. She was a good lay, but I wasn't convinced I would want to be stuck with her snobbish, whiny, spoiled ways for the rest of my life. I showered and pulled on a pair of jeans with a royal blue t-shirt depicting a howling wolf. I headed down to the dining room and, along the way, decided I would talk to Katya about continuing to see each other. She might not have been my mate, but I was still a man and darn it, men had needs. Jared grumbled a little at that thought, but didn't say anything. As I walked into the dining room and sat down in my usual seat, I began to smell a scent I had never smelled before. It smelled like roses and vanilla, and it was nearly overpowering. I looked around, trying to find the source of the scent. Katya and Ethan weren't there yet, but David was, and he was looking at me strangely. Dude, what are you looking for? he asked. And also, I'm sorry I had to miss the party last night. Granny and Pop had a water pipe burst, so Dad and I went to fix it. I waved him off, distracted by the scent. It's cool, dude, I said absently. Anyway, do you smell that? Smell what? he asked. I don't know, it's like roses and vanilla, I replied. I need. Mate. Jared started yelling. She's here. Go find her. Mate. You need what? David asked, looking confused. My mate is here, I said, looking around wildly. People were starting to stare at me, but I didn't care. She was here and I was going to find her. Suddenly, the kitchen door swung open and the scent became much stronger. I whipped my head around to see Candy Ann come out of the kitchen carrying two heaping plates of eggs. Her gaze landed on me, and as soon as we locked eyes, Jared went crazy. Mate, he screamed. Mate. Go to her. Go to our mate. Mate. Are you crazy? I yelled at him. She can't be our mate. She's a weakling. A nobody. Her own family doesn't even want her. How would she ever be the Luna? Shows what you know, he snarled back. Go. Two. Mate. Fine, I snapped at him. I knew what I needed to do. Might as well get it over with. As I started to stand up, Candy Ann set the plates of eggs down and rushed into the kitchen. I knew she'd felt the mate bond, and probably wasn't any happier about it than I was. I slammed open the kitchen door and immediately spotted her leaning against the wall by the door. I slammed my hand beside her head on the wall. I noticed her flinch, but I ignored it. At that moment, I didn't care if I scared her. I was pushed. You. I growled. Of all the she-wolves in the world, I got stuck with a weakling like you for a mate, I spat. You'll never be strong enough or smart enough to be the Luna of this pack. The moon goddess made a mistake, pairing you to me. She glared at me. Do you think I'm happy about this, she snapped. You and your cronies have never done anything but treat me like Clip and suddenly I find out I'm supposed to be stuck with you for life. I was impressed. So the wench actually seemed to be finding a little backbone. No matter though. She was still a weakling. How the moon goddess thought she would be a suitable Luna was beyond me. You're making a huge mistake. Jared snarled at me. Shut up, you big oaf. I know what I'm doing. I snapped. Well, then, let's get this over with. I, Cody Jacobs, future alpha of the Howling Wolf Pack, Ray, I started to say, but I was cut off by the door slamming open again. I looked over to see my dad standing beside us, glaring at me with his arms crossed over his chest. What in the moon goddess's name is going on in here, he roared. 
I could see his eyes practically shooting sparks at me, but I was too angry at the situation to care. Apparently the moon goddess gave me this. I jerked his head toward her, as a mate. She's weak and useless, and she'll never be able to be Luna. I'm rejecting her. Are you crazy? Dad roared. I felt the wench tremble, but Dad's roar was aimed at me, not her. A pack is always strongest with its true Luna, and it appears that she is ours. But Dad, she's just a useless weakling, I argued. How was it that he couldn't see that? The moon goddess does not make mistakes, son, Dad informed me. I don't usually do this, but for the good of the pack, I have to. You are ordered not to reject her. You will accept her. Do you understand? And because he used his alpha tone on me, I knew I had to follow his order. I was furious and was seeing red. Fine, I snarled. But don't expect me to like it. I turned and slammed the kitchen door back open as I stomped out of the kitchen. The pack members in the dining jumped at the loud bang as it hit the wall. They were all staring at me, seeming to expect an explanation, but I just ignored them all and strode out of the dining room and out of the pack house. I needed a run. Jared was furious at me for trying to reject our mate and then leaving her behind, and he wouldn't speak to me or let me shift. So, in human form, I took off through the forest. Damned if I would accept such a weak she-wolf as my mate and Luna. Chapter 5 Confused Candy Ann's POV I could not believe that, of all the werewolves in this world, I was given Cody Jacobs as a mate. My bully was my mate. How ironic. I finished cleaning up the kitchen after breakfast and set out on my usual bike ride to school. I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing though. My mind was still trying to wrap itself around the fact that I was mated to the future alpha of the pack and that he was forbidden to reject me. I could theoretically reject him, as Alpha Kyle's order was not directed at me, but I would imagine Alpha Kyle would still be angry at me if I did reject his son, and I didn't need that. Besides, I had promised him I would give Cody a chance, and I tried to keep my promises. Because I wasn't really focused on where I was going, I didn't notice that I was drifting into the road a little. I was snapped out of my reverie by the screeching of brakes, and a blue Chevy Silverado came sliding to a halt directly beside me, barely bumping my bike and knocking me over. I thought vaguely that it was a good thing I'd automatically put on my helmet and pads before starting out this morning. Luckily, I hadn't been going all that fast, and the truck had all but stopped before it bumped me. I only slid a foot or two on the pavement, resulting in a small patch of asphalt burn on my right shoulder. But my bike was so old that even that slight of a bump left the tire pretty mangled. I could have cried. The bike wasn't much, but it was mine, and now it was unrideable. What were you doing? I heard a voice yell, and I heard the truck door slam. Right about that time the scent of oranges and vanilla hit my nose, and I turned my head to see Cody stomping towards me. I sighed. Great, I thought, pulling myself and my now messed up bike up. Of all the people to be hit by, I just had to be hit by my ever so loving mate. I heard Ash and a giggle at my sarcasm. I'm sorry, I apologized in a whisper. I didn't want to antagonize him anymore. I kept my head down to avoid eye contact. He grumbled under his breath. You better pray this didn't scratch my truck, or you'll be paying for the damages, he said angrily. I snapped my eyes up to him. His truck. At least the truck was still drivable. I just lost my only mode of transportation. Granted, it was my fault, but did he have to be so mean about it? But to try to avoid more confrontation, I just whispered, I'm sorry, again. He looked at my bike and sighed. He scowled at me, then pointed to the other side of the truck. Get in, he demanded, taking my bike out of my hands and tossing it into the bed of the truck. I stared at him wide-eyed. Did he say? Are you deaf? He said impatiently. I said get in. Oh, I, are you sure? 
I asked hesitantly. He may have been a bully, but apparently he was also my mate. I debated if I could trust him. Of course I'm sure, he bit out. He settled it by grabbing my hand, dragging me around to the side of the truck and, opening the door, he shoved me in. He then hurried back to his side and got in. I shrank back against the door, staring at him and wondering if I could trust him. His dad had ordered him not to reject me, but he hadn't said anything about killing me. Put your seatbelt on already, he said impatiently. After I complied, he started towards the school. We hadn't gotten very far when he yanked the truck over to the side of the road and stopped. He turned sideways to look at me. W what are you d doing? I stuttered. Look, don't get me wrong, he started. I still don't want you as a mate, but my wolf won't shut up until I do this. Do what? I asked. Before I could blink, he'd slid across the seat and had my face in his hands. He swiftly leaned down and crushed his lips to mine. I made a little squeak of surprise, but he kept his lips on mine. I could not believe this was happening. My mate, who also happened to be my bully, was kissing me. I felt the sparks exploding in every spot our skin was making contact. Before I knew it, I was returning the kiss. To be honest, this was my first kiss, so I was going purely on instinct. I felt his tongue firmly pressing against the seam of my lips, demanding entrance. I yielded and opened my mouth slightly, granting him entrance. I felt his tongue start to swirl around mine and I moaned. His lips moved from my mouth to my jawline, then slowly starting working their way down my throat. I hesitantly wrapped my arms around his neck, and I felt his hands slowly slide under my shirt, brushing against the soft skin of my stomach. Ashanda was practically purring. Just as suddenly as he'd started, he jerked back from me and removed my arms from around his neck. He slid back into the driver's seat and banged his fist on the steering wheel. No, he growled, I don't want you. I don't want this. He whipped his head around to glare at me. After this, I want you to stay away from me. Do you hear me? I blinked back tears. I thought maybe we'd started to have a breakthrough of sorts, then he pushed me away. And now he was telling me to stay away from him altogether. What had I done to deserve this? Ashanda was growling. Nothing, my dear girl, she said angrily. We haven't done anything to deserve this. He's just a fool. But my own family doesn't even want me, I argued. Maybe I'm the fool to have even thought for a second my mate would want me. No, Candy Ann, she insisted. This isn't our fault. I sighed and stared out the window. At least we were almost to the school and I wouldn't be stuck in this truck with my so-called mate anymore. Cody POV. Jared was howling with happiness in my head. He was happy to have had any contact with our mate. As for me though, I was anything but happy. How could I have let myself lose control like that? I didn't want the wench, I thought angrily. She has a name, you big dummy, Jared snapped. Duh, I snapped at him. But I'll call her what I want. He snarled at me. Not if you want me to keep talking to you. Maybe I could use a few days without you yammering. I replied, snorting inwardly. You wouldn't be able to shift either, he pointed out. Rogue attack. You'd be screwed. I sighed. Okay, okay, I'll ask if I can call her candy. Okay. You happy now? Not yet, but that would be a start. I glanced over at Candy Ann. She was staring out the window quietly, just as she had been since our kiss. Can I call you Candy? I asked her gruffly. She looked at me, surprised. You actually care about what I want to be called, she asked. I felt a little uncomfortable. I knew we'd called her some not-so-nice things in the past. Well, um, yeah, I guess I do, I replied. Well, I suppose candy is an improvement over wench, she said wryly. I'm fine with it. 
I offered her a small smile. Thanks. You're welcome. Candy Ann POV. I sat in my first period class, not really paying attention to my surroundings, trying to figure out what had happened that morning. Had he seriously just asked me what I wanted to be called? He nor anyone else in this pack had cared for 18 years, so why start now? Because his wolf threatened to stop him from shifting if he didn't stop calling you wench, Ash and I informed me. I was surprised. How do you know that? Because we wolves can sometimes communicate without involving our human halves, she replied. By the way, Jared is very happy to have us as a mate. Jared? Is that his wolf? I've never heard his name mentioned, I remarked. Yes, that's him, she said. I like him better than his human half, she added with a laugh. Sounds like I might like him better too, I replied with a giggle. Hopefully he can make Cody come around, Ashanda said. I sighed. I don't even know if I want him coming around. He's pulled a lot of mean pranks over the years, Ashanda. I don't know if you realize how much he's done to me, I said quietly. I know, sweetheart, she answered sadly. I have access to your memories, remember. I can see the things he did. Like when he stole your lunch tray every day for a week in 8th grade, even knowing that was the only meal you got each day, then laughed at you for getting caught stealing food. Or the time he glued the bathroom door shut here at the pack house and it was 30 minutes before someone came and let you out. Or... I mentally held up a hand. Please don't, I begged. Those memories were painful and I didn't like rehashing them. I'm sorry, baby girl, I didn't mean to upset you, Ashanda apologized. I was just saying, I can see what you've been through and how you felt. I know you meant well, I told her. Those are just difficult things to think about. I'll try not to bring it up again, she promised. It's okay, I said. Maybe one day I'll get to where I can talk about it, but I'm just not there yet. Miss Amberson. Is there a reason you're not paying attention? Mrs. Lovelace, my first period English teacher was standing right beside my desk. Apparently she'd been trying to get my attention for several minutes. Everybody in the class was staring at me. And yes, Mrs. Lovelace was Ethan's mother. I'm sorry, Mrs. Lovelace, I apologized. I just met my wolf after midnight last night, so I'm still getting used to it. I'll do better. She smiled. I know how that is, Candy Ann, but you have to pay attention in class, okay? I nodded. I will. Throw me under the bus, why don't you, Ashanda grumbled. I had to fight to suppress a snicker. You love me, I replied. You're right on that one, my girl, she said. You are right. I love you too, Ashanda. After class, I was walking to my locker to get my science book for second period when I caught a whiff of Cody's scent. I turned to see him standing with Ethan and Katya about 20 yards from me. David was nowhere to be seen, which wasn't quite the norm but whatever. I honestly didn't care. Katya had her arms around Cody's neck, and he smirked at me before turning back and giving her a deep, steamy kiss. I felt a stabbing pain in my chest, and Ashanda was fuming. Let me out, she demanded. I will claw that bitch's eyes out. And him. I will knock him out. Let me at them. Before I could even think about responding to her, a deep, low growl reverberated through the hallway. Mine. Cody POV. I was still trying to figure out just what had happened in my truck that morning. All I knew was that Jared was going insane in my head, demanding that I claim Candy Ann, or should I say Candy, and mark her as ours. I kissed her to shut him up, but the kiss ended up going so much further than I intended. It was like once I touched her, I couldn't stop myself. The sparks when we touched were much more intense than I expected. If I hadn't managed to stop when I did, I would have mated and marked her then and there. 
When we got to the school, she practically ran out of my truck and into the building after saying a quick thanks. Katya was waiting outside my classroom when first period ended. There's my handsome Alpha, she said seductively, wrapping her arms around my neck. I forced myself to smile at her. Happy birthday, princess, I said, trying not to choke on the pet nickname I'd always called her. What was wrong with me? Because she's not our mate, her sister is, Jared retorted. Shut up, you mutt, I retorted back. I caught a whiff of roses and vanilla, and turned to see Candy staring at us. Part of me wanted to go to her, but the rational part of my brain was telling me not to be stupid, that she was too weak to be my mate. Weak is the last thing she is, Jared snarled. I thought I told you to shut up, I snapped. I smirked at Candy, then turned back to draw Katya into a kiss I wasn't really feeling. I was just about to pull away when a loud, menacing growl reverberated throughout the hallway. Mine! I heard a voice roar from the end of the hall. I turned to see my best friend, my future beta, striding towards me with murder in his eyes. He strode over to us and snatched Katya out of my arms. Mine, he roared again, his face just inches from my own. I had two inches, twenty pounds, and a slightly stronger bloodline on him, but at the moment he looked like he could have ripped me apart with his bare hands. I stepped back with my hands held up to show him he had nothing to worry about. Sorry, dude, I didn't know, I apologized. You have your own mate, he snapped. Leave mine alone. Ethan stepped in between us. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? Katya was staring at David, her jaw hanging open. Um, well, apparently, David is my mate, she sputtered. She shoved against his chest. But this can't be. I'm supposed to be a Luna, not a beta female. And what does he mean, you have a mate? She snapped at me. Who is she? I winced. Well, I haven't really had a chance to tell anyone but... It's Candy Ann, David interrupted me. Now it was my turn to glare at him. That was not for you to tell, I snapped. Katya's gaze snapped to where Candy was watching everything from a distance. You, she screeched. You think you have what it takes to be Luna of this pack. She tried to lunge towards Candy, but David held her back. Babe, stop it. It doesn't matter anyway. You're mine, he said forcefully. It does matter, she yelled at him. What if I don't want to be yours? You'll get used to it, he snapped. She broke out of his arms and lunged at her sister. Before she could touch her, I surprised myself by stepping between them. Don't touch her, I growled at Katya. She stared at me with wide eyes. You're defending her now, she said in disbelief. It seems I am, I growled at her. Now leave. Go with your mate. You will not bother her. I used my alpha tone to get my point across. David pulled her away down the hall. Ethan stood with his jaw hanging open, not knowing what had just happened or where to turn. I turned to see Candy staring at me, her eyes wide as saucers. Are you okay? I asked her gruffly. She nodded in response, not seeming to trust her voice. I nodded back. Good, I said. I turned to the crowd that had gathered and, using my alpha tone, said, All right, y'all, there's nothing to see here. Go back to what you were doing. I turned back to Candy. See you around. I turned and started to walk off when I heard her voice behind me. Cody. I turned back and looked at her. She averted her eyes, but whispered, thanks. No one has ever, well, just, thanks. I gave her a curt nod. You're welcome. With that, I turned and walked away.